All right. Group eight. Who's the spokesperson? All right, group eight, tell us where you're gonna put everybody else. Keep it down. We gotta listen to group eight. Okay. Um, we're group eight. We're gonna set up shop right here in Worcester, Massachusetts. Right here in Worcester, Massachusetts. All right. Um, because we're all already here, and Worcester state gov uh, city government actually does a pretty bad job of enforcing emissions. Regulations. <laughs> like I know for a fact that there's a mechanic shop down on Park Ave that is year and year again exceeded its emissions. It's very bunch to how really bad and the city just does nothing. So we might be able to get away with some things and save a little money that way. Um, All right. So what industries does your business going to serve? We're going to serve um, the aerospace industry, but not in the way you might expect. Uh, Wood Regional Airport is right nearby. And it's true. Yeah, and the chairs there are pretty yucky. A lot of the, the facilities are pretty bad, and they're going to need a, a lot of them. So we're thinking of working on the little knobs and screws and knickknacks that you need to attach the chairs and bathroom faucets and all sorts of those. All right. I'm, I'm not certain that that's serving the aerospace industry. I mean, um, every park counts. No, I, I get it, but it's more serving facilities maintenance. Yes. So you're, you're serving. Okay. Um, and so you're going to compete directly with China. Yes. Okay. Let's walk our parts right over, though. The shipping costs will will make up the difference. Okay. So um, is this is the plan for the group? You're gonna locate in Worcester. I'm not. I, I'm not opposed to locating in Worcester. I think Worcester is not a horrible place. I do not think that you should write in your business plan. We're gonna locate in Worcester because they're not good at enforcing environmental regulations, and we're gonna break the law. That's under the table. We will, yeah, we will but that. here's the thing: because the end result of what you do in the project is you've got to convince the person who's going to finance the starting of your business to give you the money, right? And so if you tell me you're going to take my money and go out and break the law, I don't think you're good enough at breaking the law for me to want to give you my money. You would have to really convince me that you were a better lawbreaker than this. I mean, have you heard of us breaking the law before? You've just told me you plan to. Okay, but you haven't heard of us forum, before. Broadcasting live on the internet. So I don't think that's going to work. Um, so I think you need to work a little bit better on your rationale for why Worcester. Um, and I think, I think it could be good to serve that market that you're looking at serving as long as you don't focus just on the Worcester Regional Airport because they're not gonna buy that much stuff. But if you look at serving and so, so if we think about this, uh, is that, do you have anything? No. Okay, I'll get your mic back. Uh, if we think about deciding what industry segments to serve, Serve. So that was non-conventional. I wasn't expecting to say they want to serve the, the people that are maintaining the facilities at airports. There's a lot of airports in the world. And there, there are definitely certain groups. And, and so you're going to look at customers. So one of your next steps is going to be to figure out who are those customers. And so who are the operators of these airports? And I'm not going to ask you to go start making sales calls or anything. But you should be able to say, we're going to serve this segment. These are some of the big customers in this segment. Um, that wasn't necessarily going to be one of the next steps, but it is for you guys. <laughs> uh, what else? Any other feedback from the class for the plan besides don't admit on YouTube that you're planning to break the law? Any other feedback from anybody in the class? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think he'd be very good at breaking the law, so certainly I'm not going to finance his law breaking. Um, there's a lot of people that break the law every day that I haven't heard of because I don't pay attention to that. But perfect. All right. 
All right, how about we get another group, another group that does not need slides to present? Uh, is the internet back? Anybody? It's back. We could try that. Did you submit them? Did you do the submit thing? You're doing that right now? Is anybody else does not have slides ready to go? Okay. What else? Anybody else does not have slides ready to go? So only group eight had no slides? You have no slides? All right. That makes you ready to go. Which group are you? 12. Group 12. Okay, group 12. Tell us what you're going to do. And please don't say we're going to we're going to break the law on purpose. Okay. Group 12. Um, we are group 12. We are going to be manufacturing for the automotive industry, specifically steering wheels. And we are going to go to Fremont, California, because that's where there's a Tesla factory and it's warm there. Do you want to know our group, our roles? Yeah, what do you what do you plan to do in the group? Molly's the manager. Thomas is the engineer. Bell is sales and marketing. I'm operations. And we have one more person and she's logistics. All right. And so Fremont, California, because you'll be close to Tesla and you want to try to sell to Tesla. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's warm there. Yeah. That is not a horrible reason to pick where you're going to put your business. I um, Have people uploaded slides now? The internet's working? I'll see if some of them are there now. Uh, give us. If you guys want to go without slides, you can do that. All right. The assignments. Where is it? Group 25. All right. Hey, where's group one? Group one. You guys ready? All right. Um, let me see if I get the screen thing to work again. Ah, because I haven't switched back to I believe you. I, I absolutely believe you. This, I don't have a red marker right now, so I can't let you do the red squigglies. All right. Slides are probably going to be a problem. Um, no, you could do that, but it won't go to the screen share. So it won't get captured. All right. But if you can connect to the thing, try it. See if it works. Because I can't. Go ahead. Connect to the projector. I'll point the camera at the thing. Because for some reason, I can't connect to it. Oh, perfect. There's one right behind you. All right, what group is this? Uh, this four. Four. Hello. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, sharks. We are Wigtastic Firearms. We're going to be located in Chubbuck, Idaho. You may be wondering why Chubbuck, Idaho. Main reason is that they have the lowest total taxes by gun industry per capita. Some other reasons include... Third, they have the third lowest property taxes, the seventh most gun sales per capita, and a commercial rate starting at 6.08. So basically, we can probably sell a lot of firearms to a lot of you guys without worrying too much about taxes. We will pay our taxes, I swear. We will. Why specifically Chubbuck? Well, 
I think the main reason is we saw a little warehouse there and it looks pretty awesome. Um, some other reasons include the fact that there are three major highways, which makes it a major shipping area. And there is a nearby airport that supports cargo shipping. So we can basically get everything everywhere, hopefully at a decent price. I'm not sure if we've looked directly into that yet. Not quite, but I mean, it looks pretty awesome. Uh, my name is Jack. I'm going to be handling operations. This is Sean. I'm going to be doing uh, the maintenance and uh, quality assurance. I'm Chris. I'll be doing the engineer position as well as management. I'm Eden, and I'll be doing sales and marketing. I'm Kwa, and I'll be doing the legal. And then there's also Ben, who's doing logistic, logistics, stock keeping, and management. Who he's on a business. He's trip. on a business trip. He's you know. Getting all of the the gun parts and such. <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna manufacture components for firearms, or are you gonna manufacture firearms? Um, are you gonna I assemble them? Of okay. So one of the things you're gonna have to do for next week is figure out what licensing is required in the United States to do that job. That is so that'll plan. that'll be one of the things for next week for you to do. Um, yeah. Was the the first group that went? What group were you again? Eight. Group eight. Yeah. You're going to have to come up with a better rationale for Worcester for next week and, um, and uh, understand who some of the big players are in your group. What was my feedback for your group? Nothing particular. Not, nothing. Oh, I think um, I don't think you should tie all of your hopes to one big customer. So you might want to think about the uh, so the aftermarket steering wheels and other components and maybe not just one component but uh there's probably in southern california is a great place to sell aftermarket automotive stuff too so i would think about that uh is there another group can you guys disconnect so another group could start up but thank you for your um explosive presentation who's, who's next you guys you ready all right go Just do the thing. I think it's because I switched my Wi-Fi, but I could not reconnect. Maybe. Maybe he can connect. There it is. 3203. Okay, this hello everyone. Group one. We are group one. Um, my name's Andrew, and we're gonna go through this. Um, so we are gonna be, oh, come on. <laughs> uh, we're gonna be manufacturing parts utilized in door closers, like the ones you see right over there. Um, we're gonna be um, selling to the construction industry, so we'll utilize CNC machinery with uh, milling and lathes and order materials needed after orders are placed. Um, so our location. Uh, we're going to plan on going in Houston. Uh, we have a warehouse that's about $695,000. So why we picked Houston? Uh, right now, Houston is home to lots of new manufacturing and new buildings. They're doing a ton of construction with new buildings. So we think we can get a lot of customers out there if we uh, decide to put it in Houston. And I sell locally and we'll probably will sell out of Houston as well. Um, we just needed the space for CNC machinery and office logistics, finance, property, teams, all that stuff. Um, yeah. So our cost and roles, um, so we have Jenny on the logistics, um, Sam on marketing and sales, Nick on quality, um, Braden on finance and accounting, and I'm gonna be an engineer slash programmer. So we decided that cost of, uh, we looked up cost of machines. Uh, we found that we, uh, decided to have more milling machines uh, as we have more complex parts. So we decided to have three um, and we found an average around $15,000. Um, so 45,000 in total. Uh, one lathe, because uh, some of the parts, um, that we have more complex okay. parts for milling. 
I think I think you've got to be on the scope of what we need for today. Oh, okay. But uh, this is this is good. We're going to be looking at all this stuff later. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> any, anybody have questions for the group? Okay. Thanks. Thanks for your presentation. Yeah, no uh, was there any other big points you wanted to share? Um, so you want to go to Houston. You want to make parts for door closers, yeah. serve the local and national market. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so it sounds like you want to have a product. You want to be selling door closers themselves, not just like screws and, and arm things that other people then sell. Um, more like the long market, like initially, like selling like door closers, but then eventually expanding to serve like other random fixtures around uh, around um, an office space or home. Okay, so roughly the same market as the Worcester Airport people. Yeah. Okay. So we have competitive companies. Yeah, but we're in, in Houston, man. <laughs> And the and the gun makers are close to the Canadian border, so they can flee the jurisdiction. <laughs> um, would if you guys unshare, somebody else can share. We're gonna, we're gonna follow the law. Too. Who who's next? All right. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna totally follow the laws. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they they're next, but you guys can go after. And it's just because I was looking in their direction when I said, who's next? And they raised their hand. Nothing personal. But we have been heavy on this left side of the room, haven't we? Wait, no. Now it's the right side of the room. Oop. Now it's the left side of the room. You guys ready? Uh, it's being a pain. Solstice. Maybe someone else could go while we figure it out. Solstice is being on. It's not that. Um, if the other group's ready to try, go ahead and try over here. I think we have one mic. Now it's. Now it's. Now it's. All right, whoever's first, I guess. Go for it. Okay, uh, so we're Modomatic, which we got from an online business name generator. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> That's know. perfect. I love it. Yeah, he said we can use ChatGPT. So. Use any resources you can. <laughs> so we're going to be in uh, Leland, North Carolina. They have a very low, they have the lowest state corporate tax. They're on the East Coast, centralized on the East Coast, uh, really close to a railroad, freight for airport. Uh, it's a low cost for lease. It's about it's 5,000 square feet, and it's $12 per square foot per year. So that's about $60,000 a year. Um, it's got two drive-in bays, and it was built like this month uh, or finished construction this month. So that's really cool. Uh, and then they also provided a really nice model artist rendering yeah <laughs> so that was nice uh so our industry we're gonna do this consumer industry um what specific products we still need to figure out um but we figure the consumer industry is something that is always going to exist and as long as we have a good idea we can always find something to cater to and so when you say consumer industry do you mean sell direct to consumer yeah like on a web page and have products and you just sell them to people correct come up so little widgets could yeah. be fidget toys whatever it is okay yep. uh for roles um me and deshwan will be on engineering and operations because we figure we should have at least two people that are going to actually be running the machines um brady is on logistics purchasing and stock keeping um cc is on management quality and maintenance and then lily's on finance sales and marketing Okay. That's what we've got. Any questions from the group? All right, I'm gonna try one more time to connect to Solstice and see if it'll be easier to switch between who's presenting.
Oh, this time it works. Oh, 0339. Oh, 0339. Connect me. That's up. All right. Um, which which group number? Oh, cool. Eleven. You didn't submit anything though. Refresh. I love it. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect and, and why don't you guys just try to connect to the solstice thing because mine's clearly not working. <laughs> and, uh, and if this one doesn't work smoothly, we'll just give up on the slides for the rest of the groups. You raise your somebody at each table raise your hand if your table hasn't presented yet. Anyone know how to do three, four, someone out? Five. Yeah. They're not they're just not listening yet, right? Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, in the I'm web good. browser? All right. All right. I do have so if it doesn't just there. work, let's just do it without the slides. Sometimes you have to deal with technology not working, I right? So let's uh, let's give up on slides for now. Wait, we, I'm just typing in the link. But okay, hurry up, hurry up. I'm going. Oh, three, three, nine. Did it work? Maybe. We'll see. Um, come on. Nice. All right. So our uh, our group were called SKH Performance Parts. Definitely an original name. Um, just kidding. It's a joke name. We're going to come up with a new one later. But um, we're going to be based in Southern California. We're going to be serving the high performance car industry, making parts like camshafts and pistons and uh, turbine wheels and stuff like that for turbochargers. Um, we picked this location because it's a very popular area for people with high performance cars. Um, also, a lot of the market comes from people who have cars that are imported from Japan, and that's where they start in California. So that's why we chose that location. Um, we found an office building in Laguna Hills. Uh, our members' roles, um, I'm the lead, lead engineer slash manager, Jacobs Logistics, G1 and Devin are currently um, on a business trip, same as the other group. Uh, their quality control and operations, and then Anders and Sam here are the marketing manager and machinists. All right. And you said office building. Is yeah. did you pick a particular spot, or that's just a, a random picture? That, that, that's the office. Okay. And is it for light industrial use or just office? Just office. So, so you may have zoning issues with the local uh, local place. So, so you may have to make sure that you find a place that's zoned for light industrial. Yeah, warehouse light industrial is usually what you'll, you'll find there. Um, I think I'm going to give up on trying to have slides unless if if it's two seconds, go. <laughs> next, next week i'll make sure that everybody submits a uh, submit slides first and that we have a good computer for switching uh, but let's just oh, there you go all right um hi my name is blaze schroeder we are group 10 um we have not come up with a name or we're going short and simple today everything's no, going to be developed no name was required but for today exactly our location is 716 riverwood drive pembroke new hampshire 03275. Um, the that. leasing space for about 4740 a month. New Hampshire has no sales tax, which could help um, with sales. 
um, and there are corporate taxes of 7.5%. We plan to work within the medical industry, um, especially focusing on uh, custom implant parts, screws, any kind of those kinds of things. They tend to be very expensive and need to be very precise. Um, these are very important pieces to the world. And we thought that the medical industry is a good um, industry to have an impact in, um, very positive. And for our jobs for each person, Jackie would be doing our shipping and receiving slash logistics. Um, Emma would be doing our operations. I would be doing engineering and programming. Sales and marketing would be Sanjeet. Um, quality assurance would be Alex and finance and accounting would be Eric. Perfect. Um, and so if you're going to work in the medical industry, I'm going to also ask you to figure out what kind of um, licensing is required and what kind of standards or things do you have to be able to comply with in order to sell in that industry um, as your extra task for next week. Uh, who else needs to go? We'll switch sides. All right. Try it. See if it works. We're good. Go for it. Okay. So I have a pretty small group over here, so we all have a lot of roles, but we're going to be in the automotive sector. Specifically, we're going to be making windshield wipers, um, and we're going to do this in Michigan. That's a picture of the building we're going to buy. It's like 1.15 million for 10,000 square feet, which is pretty good. We chose that because like 85% of the automotive industry is based in Michigan. Um, so you're really close to a lot of other manufacturers in the industry. Um, it's already really built up. There are a lot of facilities and testing centers, and it's also really good for networking with other companies that are going to need windshield wipers that we can work with. Um, it's also like very pretty centralized, and like it's 40 minutes from Detroit, so you can really like ship stuff out, um, kind of the center of everything. And there are a lot of automotive workers also that go to Michigan, so it's kind of a good place to get workers. There's also a lot of land available for what we need, and there are pretty good tax incentives in Michigan. Um, so we all have a lot of roles. I'm going to be the CEO, um, operations VP, and the sales and marketing, and Ben is going to be CFO, lead engineer, and the logistics. All right. Um is there anybody that is not yet in a group that is here? Because we were supposed to have groups of two. Three was the minimum number. Um, we'll, we'll work that out offline. Who, who else? Need, oh, I said we'd go on the other side. Do it. Then you guys will be after. Yes. Um, you need to use CNC machines to make the molds for injection molding. So does it count? I don't know. Probably not. Not for the purposes of, of this exercise. All right. Okay. So um, our company is By the Coast Medical and Co. Um, Andrew is quality control. Corbin is marketing and sales. I'm engineer. Um, Daniel is production. Uh, Anthony is finance. And Nicholas is uh, logistics. So we picked Maine for our location, um, primarily because Maine has a lot of incentive for investment in healthcare. Um, they had a recent, well, within the last few years, they've had um, recent um, medical shortages in terms of personnel and in terms of equipment. So they've been investing a lot of money into the industry. They have up to 127.9 thousand people employed in health services, which is the largest industry, um, incentivizing any um, healthcare related products. Um, they're close to New York and um, the East Coast in general. So you can, uh, and Canada, so you can ship to um, both hubs. Um, and it's the highest job growth in Maine um, is in pharmaceutical me medicine manufacturing sector. Um, and that's because there's been a lot of state investment and federal investment into healthcare um, in recent years. 
So um, it's also a good place to invite investors. Like you're skiing, and it's not hot, but it's nice weather, relatively speaking. All right. Um, and then we picked ventilators. Um, so we, we assumed that, okay, if there's a lot of investment from Maine into that kind of industry, and there's also a lot of recent investment from the federal government into code related things, then we should pick something like that because there'll be, um, the federal government is very wasteful in spending. And so we can always guarantee a quick buck if we sell ventilators. Um, and also there was, um, in 20, 20, there was um, a shortage of ventilators, and that was particularly because internationally there were um, there were um, counter counteracting investments in it and bids for ventilators. So like some places would have shortages when others wouldn't. So there's clearly a market for it and a demand for it, assuming there's another pandemic or virus that comes along. Um, and long term, we hope to rely on maintenance fees because um, ventilators do have an expiration date. And because they are a specialty product where there's a lot of parts to it, you'd have to um, potentially maintain it, say, every 10 years or replace it indefinitely. So it's not like it's going to last 50 years and be out of business. Cool. All right. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Perfect. Um, who's Somebody over here needs to go? If it goes quick, go ahead. Otherwise... I'm good without the slides. Sweet. So the industry we chose is uh, machining 3D printer parts, specifically the parts that are already made out of plastic. The reason that we chose this is there aren't very many places out there that do it, and the ones that do do a really poor job. Most of the CAD designs are already out there. We just have to generate CAM for it. And it's a useful thing. Most of the 3D printed parts on 3D printers are pretty crummy, not dimensionally accurate, weak. So we can machine things, those parts out of aluminum and people will, people do want to buy them. They just don't have a good place to buy them currently. We will be doing this in Louisiana. Let's see if we can. There we go. So we'll do it in Louisiana. It's $11 a square foot. Okay, I'm going to forget about that. Uh, and there's extremely low sales tax there. And uh, suppliers for steel, plastics, and aluminum all within the area. We uh, found a warehouse that was for sale. I can't show it to you because Google Slides is annoying. And then finally, the breakdown of the employees. Noah and Kara will be our machinists. Then I will be marketing and PR, kind of aggressively marketing this towards 3D printer creators who can then kind of diffuse the information about our superior parts. Then we will have a shipping and re re receiving an upkeep job uh, that we will currently have in our group. But hopefully, once we expand, we can give that to an intern or someone else because <coughs> we love our group and they are very skilled. And then we have an engineer slash R&D uh, who will kind of find, find what is needed and then gen put that into CAM so that the machinists can make it. Perfect. And finally, we'll outsource accounting. All right. Um, and so why did you pick Louisiana specifically? It's cheap. Cheap. OK. I think you said that. I just wasn't paying attention. Yeah. All right. No, you guys are next. No, no, never mind. I saw it for a minute. <laughs> it's there. How many else need to go? Who else needs to go besides them? You guys have already gone? Anybody else? You, you still need to go after them? Anybody else in the back? Okay. All right. Try to keep this to about a minute or so. Okay. So we're group six. Uh, we're going to be serving the aerospace industry, specifically airplane seat frames. Gabe will be our engineer. I'll be in charge of marketing and sales. Charlie will be be handling finance and accounting. Jess will be our stock keeper and shipping receipt products. And Quinn will be in charge of operations and maintenance. Through a legal loophole, we'll be registered in Delaware, which means that we will have to pay no corporate tax if we don't operate in Delaware. And then we found this garage in Fairhaven, Massachusetts, which we'll be based out of. We'll set up shop in there. 
uh, and it's an adv advantageous uh, place to set up shop in due to its close proximity to Boston Logan. Here's uh, just a brief overview of logistics and finances. This All is right. mostly guesstimation. Pretty sure you're still gonna have to pay Massachusetts taxes if you do business in Massachusetts. But um, but you won't have to also pay Delaware tax um, in the back, right? Is somebody awake? And you guys, right? And after these two, nobody else, right? Okay. Uh, so we are group two. Uh, our startup is going to be in uh, at 1025 Findlay Road, Lima, Ohio. It's about a 35,000 square foot building. Uh, property costs around 775000 uh, We're going to be serving the automotive industry, though we haven't exactly figured out which parts we're looking for yet. Um, so I'm Morgan. I'm going to be finance accounting. Um, Simon is going to be sales and marketing and shipping and receiving. Dante, who's not here right now, is going to be operations manager and quality assurance manager. James is going to be maintenance, and Christian is going to be the engineering, though we expect some interplay between most of those roles. All right, perfect. And you said Ohio or Iowa? Ohio. 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 Any particular reason you picked Ohio? Central, I mean, we know that uh, for North Carolina, that for Peterbilt up in Oregon, Cummins over in Indiana. Should we even bother with the slides right now? It's up to you. If it goes quick, go for it. Otherwise, no slides. All right. Well, I'm just going to get started. Um, our company name is JBass. It is a combination of all of our initials, not very um, original. We're going to be serving the locomotion um, industry in New Hampshire. <laughs> yeah. Well, locomotion. We're going to be serving the locomotion industry. Um, it's eleven dollars a square foot, and we found a seventy-eight hundred uh, square foot office building. Um, like people ahead of us said, uh, New Hampshire is a pretty good place to do business. There's not a huge sales tax. Um, and then our job roles: I am quality assurance and maintenance. Aiden, who's on a business trip, he's our machinist and finance. Um, Simon is shipping and receiving and purchasing. Simeon is management and sales marketing, and Jonathan is our machinist and programmer. All right, perfect. Did I mention I hate this classroom? I thought that this was gonna be a perfect activity for this classroom, because we could move around and I could just switch who we were sharing the screen and it would go fast, yeah. Little did I know this was not a perfect activity for this classroom. Uh, we are going to try this again next week, uh, but uh, I will today put up the submission thing for you to put up your slides and um, put up your slides. If you do like a Google Sheets or Google Slides or something like that, make sure you share a link that anyone can open. So like open up an incognito tab and put, paste the link in it and make sure that it works even if you're not logged into Google. That way we can quickly move through the presentations. Uh, everybody needs to have a presentation next week. If you didn't have one, I think there might have been only one group that didn't have one this week. Um, if I gave your group something specific to look at, make sure you, you include some converse, conversation about that in your uh, in your presentation next week. I want to look specifically at what equipment you think you need to have. So what machine tools or Somebody asked about injection molding. What physical capital equipment you think you're going to need in order to do the business that you said? My other general feedback um, is a lot of the groups 
were, were pretty specific about a part or a product. Um, and I think, I think I would be willing to expand that. So beyond, uh, who was the windshield wiper group? You guys, right? So beyond saying we want to make parts for windshield wipers for cars, maybe say we want to make electromechanical assemblies for vehicles, right? So that could be um, windshield wipers. It could be the things that make the tailgate go up and down. It could be other things that are electromechanical that are sub-assemblies that go in the automotive industry. Um, likewise, with the, the steering wheels, I think you might want to have other components, and I think you want to do aftermarket stuff. Um, so firearms industry, learn about the licenses required to operate in the firearms industry and some of the things that are particular to those licenses that will be an issue for your business. Uh, same thing, medical devices, aerospace, there's certifications that aerospace businesses have. So if you're serving, actually serving the aerospace industry in a way that, that the parts move through the air, uh, look into the, the um, certifications and stuff that you would need to do that work and get some idea of the, the capital equipment that you think you're going to need to do these jobs. So, uh, and, and your group had some of this already, right? So you had, we want two lathes and three mills or something like that. So use their list as sort of an example and, and get some good estimates of the cost of acquiring that equipment. So if you go to the, the Haas website, Haas Automation website, and you say, I want to get this machine tool, they will give you a price without having to click the send me a quote button. Please don't click the send me a quote button because then a salesperson is going to get your contact information and they're going to think you're actually a person that would be actually buying a machine tool. And they're going to be all excited because from Worcester, the Worcester salesperson would be really mad at me if they get 12 RFQs all in a day from Worcester and it was because of my class. And I don't want him to be upset with me because they help us you know, get Taz machines for the, the machine shop. Um, that's not the only way to get equipment. You could look at um, used machine tools for sale websites. A lot of times when people start up a business, they want to start up at low cost. So you might look at that. There's some other businesses. So get some idea about what it costs to acquire this equipment. Okay? Um, everybody, I think everybody picked a location, right? Were there any groups that didn't have a location yet? Yeah. I think you should have some idea, like, like you had the, the place in Louisiana, right? You had a specific place picked out. And, and so you guys went to LoopNet to find that? So you picked an area you wanted to be looked up on LoopNet and say, I want industrial space. Um, so you don't have to actually be capable of buying it or renting it. Just have decided this is the thing we like. Um, so if you didn't have a location yet, get that specific location down. Um, what other general feedback? Um, so yeah, so the end goal of this, at the end of the term, the, the product that your group is going to produce is a four-page business plan that would convince me, since I guess I'm going to be the underwriter at the bank, that would convince me to give you the money that you need to start the business, right? So your job is to convince me that you've got this planned out, that you understand how much it's going to cost to operate it and how much it's going to cost to start it. Um, so that's that's the end role. We're working our way up to that. So to start with, we just had to pick some industries and, and know where we're going to be. Next week, I'd like you to know what equipment you're going to need, physical equipment. So if you have, for example, if you're running CNC machine tools, I have never used one that didn't also require air, compressed air. So if you have a CNC machine tool, you're going to have to have an air compressor. So think about those kind of things that you're going to need to build this facility. Um, if you're going to do, if you guys are switching to making injection molded parts, that's okay. But think about what other equipment you're going to need to, to serve that or do some research on how much it's going to cost to hire one of these other businesses to make your, your tooling for that. All right, so you want to you want to be a tool maker. That's perfect. A lot of those used to be a lot of those in Worcester, not so much anymore. Um, all right, hey, thank you all very much.
especially for putting up with the fabulous um, AV in the room. All right. Oh, but you were going to ask a question. And I was hoping you could ask the question when everybody was listening so that I could tell you the answer and then it would help everybody. Let me just um, disconnect this. Let me just turn this thing off. All right. So what's the question now? 